Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to West Orlando Baptist Church. We appreciate you tuning in once again for our Sunday morning worship service. Hard to believe that we're six weeks into this um, as of uh, today. Uh, but again, thank you for tuning in. We're going to sing a couple of songs, and uh, some of you stand there at your homes and sing along with us. Brother Ryan's going to come and join me. But uh, we invite you to, uh, to sing with us. Don't just listen. Please sing along, and let's lift our voices and worship to the Lord this morning. our blessed Redeemer, sing, O oh, earth, His wonderful love proclaim. Hail Him, hail Him, highest archangels in glory, strength and honor give to His holy name. Like a shepherd, Jesus will guard His children, in His arms He carries them all day long. blessed Redeemer, for our sins He suffered and bled and died. He, our rock, our hope of eternal salvation, hail Him, hail Him, Jesus the crucified. Sound His praises, Jesus who bore our sorrows, love unbounded, wonderful, deep and strong. Oh, 
worship His holy name. I worship Your holy name, Lord. I worship Your holy name. Let's pray together, Lord. Again, we thank You for the day that You've given us today, and we thank You for the opportunity of worship. Lord, even though we may not be corporately worshiping physically together, we thank you that we're able to worship um, through the technology that has um, that you've given to us. Lord, that in so many different homes today, in so many different locations, we have joined together, uh, Lord, in spirit and truth. And it's our desire through the songs that we've just sung, as Brother Ryan is about to sing in a few minutes as I preach. Lord, our desire is to worship you, is to bring honor and glory to you. Lord, um, our desire as well is to draw closer to you. And Lord, today we ask, um, Lord, for, um, we open our hearts, we open our minds, and Lord, we, we need to be encouraged. Um, Lord, we need to hear from you today, and uh, Lord, I pray that we would remove any distraction, um, anything that's in our lives, in our homes right now, uh, uh, things that may be going on uh, within our families or a business, Lord, that we would remove those and completely focus on you for these next few minutes. Lord, as we just sang in that song, uh, oftentimes we wake up in the morning and we're praising you and we're focused uh, focused on you uh, but lord when we get to the evening that's not always the case sometimes it's because of things that have happened throughout the day that we've been discouraged or we've lost sight or we strayed but lord as we sang in that song i hope and pray that that would be our um, our goal um, lord every day of our life and uh, lord even right now that we would not lose sight of you that we would not lose focus on what your desire is to do in our lives during this time of worship so lord now we ask for your blessing as brother ryan sings and also in just a moment as uh, i preach and teach your word. Lord, um, we do this to bring honor and glory to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you're there at home and standing, thank you. You could be seated. Uh, also, just want to uh, say thank you once again. Typically, we would be passing an offering plate here uh, within uh, a worship service. Thank you for your faithfulness there at home. Uh, some of you continue to mail uh, your tithes and offerings in. Some of you stop by the church office. Many of you are using uh, the online giving, and uh, we thank you. Uh, whatever avenue, uh, however you're doing it, thank you for your faithfulness. Uh, we appreciate it very much, and God will honor you and bless you for it. Um, also, I just want to make a quick announcement. Um, we are doing our best as staff to stay in contact with you as different things happen. Uh, at first, we were doing emails uh, with text. Now we have started doing some videos uh, to, to make announcements to you. Uh, we're doing our best as things once again are beginning to change as the governor has given uh, an update and uh, beginning to move uh, to the next phase. Um, it's a continual uh, ongoing change and we're doing our best as staff to determine um, from this point forward what would be the best thing for us as a church uh, for when to begin worship uh, services here at the church and what those services will look like. So we appreciate your patience. Um, all of us want to be together as bad as you, as quickly as you would like to as well. But we also want to do this um, uh, taking the proper precautions and to watch out for your safety and uh, just for our church family's safety. Lord willing, tomorrow or Tuesday, we will send out a, uh, another announcement by video. If you're not receiving the, those, please call the church office. We'll get you added to the email list or you can look on YouTube. Uh, the announcements uh, come there as well. Um, but Lord willing, uh, tomorrow or Tuesday, uh, I'll put out a video announcement uh, to share with you um, what things will look like next coming Sunday. We're hoping to begin to make some changes. I don't wanna say too much yet because we're still working on those, but please stay tuned and uh, we will give you that information as quick as we can. And then once you hear it, please feel free to share it with others. We do our best to communicate with as many people as possible, um, but your word of mouth is powerful and helps us to spread the word. So if you could help us with that, we would greatly appreciate it. Uh, Brother Br uh, Ryan is about to come and to sing for us. And I appreciate him uh, singing over the last several weeks. And uh, this morning he's singing a song that uh, maybe one or two days ago that I had uh, brought to his attention and asked him to, uh, to sing it. I appreciate him taking the time to learn this song. And uh, if you would, make sure that you listen, uh, pay attention to the words of this song. 
great introduction to the message that we're going to have this morning. But please allow God to uh, encourage you and minister to you through the song. And as I step away, typically we have fellowship time during this, uh, uh, at this time during our service as well. Thank you for the virtual high fives that you have been given. Um, but if you have somebody seated next to you right now, if you would turn, give them a high five. And, uh, and uh, just to welcome them, let them know that you love them. And uh, Brother Ryan is going to come and sing for us now. Looking up from the valley of fear, you can see down off in the distance, and you're about to lose heart right here. But don't ever give in, don't ever give up. God is with you, and you'll overcome. journey, the very how you needed it to. So don't be discouraged this time after time. God's never failed you. Go on and climb. The mountain will tell you that you can't make it over. Thank you, Brother Ryan. I appreciate that very much. And if you would, please take your Bibles and turn to 2 Chronicles chapter 20. And I encourage you there at your house to turn in your Bibles. And uh, if you have some type of electronic device, uh, please um, utilize those. We're going to be and we're going to read through several verses today. And I just want to make sure that you follow along. And uh, I promise you that it'll be a blessing to you. Looking forward to this morning's message. And um, uh, I know that over the last several weeks that uh, our emotions have been on a roller coaster. Uh, it seems, um, even just speaking for myself, there's times where I begin to see a light at the end of a tunnel and it seems I, uh, I get very optimistic and thinking that things are about to change and, and, and looking brighter and brighter. And then it just seems that somebody tries to come or the media or someone just to, to, um, you know, to put water out, uh, put water on that fire to discourage us or to, um, to maybe begin to doubt or to question. But through all of this, I am so thankful that I have in the midst of this, of this storm, of this virus, of what's affecting our entire world, I am so thankful that I have God to turn to. And I believe that if every one of you were here, I would say, aren't you thankful 
that in the midst of this situation and this trial, aren't you thankful that you have God to turn to? And aren't you thankful to know and the confidence that we can have that God is in control? Even before this uh, virus came and it has its effect in the entire world, even before this came, there would be different situations that would arise up in our lives. And uh, it could be through work. It could be through um, uh, relationships. It could just be uh, things that happen with finances or things that happen physically. Uh, we could receive some news that is discouraging. And as the song that we sang earlier, as the song that Brother Ryan just sang, and as we're about to read, it, it, it appears that there's a mountain and often we have mountains that come into our lives and that situations or circumstances that seem impossible. And when they arise in our life, often we focus on that and we think, man, this is impossible. There's no way we're going to get through. There's no way that I'm going to overcome this. What in the world am I going to do? And there's before the virus, we still had those things happen in our life. Uh, many of us, it would happen regularly where things would arise and we would just stop. And uh, it's hard right now to think about them because it seems this virus has been going on for so long. Um, but just stop for a moment and think of all the situations of all the times that have come up in your life before this, where it seemed that it was a, 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 a big mountain, a big problem or a deep valley and God saw you through. And in the midst of those things, when the mountain was before you, you're going through a valley, you're going through a problem. And many of us, what we do to encourage each other, we know what God's word says. So we will tell people, I'm just trusting in God. God's going to see me through. And sometimes, you know, we'll say that to our, our brothers and sisters in Christ and we cheer each other on. We encourage each other. But if we say that, and even right now in the midst of this, and we tell people that we know that God's going to see us through, that we're trusting in God and that we don't, have, we don't have the fear that the world would have because we know that God's in control and that God's going to provide, that God's going to heal, that God's going to see us through this. Maybe you've told that to some people over the last few weeks that weren't Christians. And many of them would probably make fun of you. Many of them would laugh at us. Many of them would say, oh, that's just a crutch that Christians have and uh, it's not even real. Uh, you're, you're just, um, uh, you're holding on to that, but there's no reality to it. I tell you what, I am thankful. Um, there's been many times in my life and in this situation, I, am, I don't know what I would do without God. I don't know what I would do without him. I, I don't know how people are making it through this time without God. I've said that before in uh, situations that have come up in some of your lives. We've talked about it and said, I, we don't know what we would do if God wasn't in our life. And then we look and we see others. I don't know how they're going to get through this without the Lord. I want us to look in the Old Testament and we're going to take a journey with a group of people. We're going to take a journey with a group of people uh, and King Jehoshaphat. Uh, this is a, uh, I love this um, portion of scripture. I have uh, preached from this portion of scripture before. Um, just for a little reference point, um, Jehoshaphat, as he is king, Jehoshaphat has been on a roller coaster. Chapter 17, he's a good king. He was a good king. In chapter 17, things were going good. Chapter 18, things went bad. Chapter 19, he began to make things right. And now we come here to chapter 20 and he's king. He's king. And at this time, uh, Israel had been divided up into uh, two nations. Uh, there's a northern and there's the southern. Uh, the northern is the kingdom of Israel. It's made up of 10 tribes. The southern is the kingdom of Judah, uh, made up of two tribes. Uh, in the southern kingdom was Jerusalem. And in that southern kingdom, uh, where Jer Jerusalem is and known as Judah, Jehoshaphat at this time in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, Jehoshaphat is the king of Judah. And um, we're going to go on a journey with them that is absolutely incredible. Uh, there as you look at this reference uh, map on the screen, if you'll notice on the other side there in um, uh, the yellow, the gold and the purple, there's three nations that are there that are going to join together and rise up against Judah. But look with me beginning in verse number one. It says, and it came to pass after this also that the children of Moab, the children of Ammon, uh, and with them other beside the Ammonites came against Jehoshaphat to battle. 
you would notice uh, on this, this next uh, map that's on the screen for you, if you think of, of, uh, of Judah where it is, and there's Jerusalem uh, that is uh, within Judah, um, Jehoshaphat is the king, uh, and uh, they we're told here in chapter 1 that the Ammonites, the Moabites, um, they had joined together, and also the ones beside them, which are the Edomites. The three of them have joined together and they're coming up as this great multitude. They're, they're coming to, to, to battle. Uh, they're coming to go to war. They're coming to, uh, to overtake um, uh, Judah and they're headed to Jerusalem. And uh, as you look there in verse number two, it says, Then there came some that told Jehos Jehoshaphat, saying, You know, even today, uh, and you know, I don't know, we don't know who these people were that came and spoke to him. Uh, it doesn't tell us much about them, but um, in essence, what they're doing, and there's people like this today, when something's happening, you always have those group of people that want to come and say, hey, did you know this is going on? Hey, did you know this is there? Sometimes it's the people that always want to come and share the bad news with you. And they always want to come and uh, try to um, uh, dampen some things. Uh, but he says here that there were some uh, that come, uh, they told Jehoshaphat, and they're saying, there cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea uh, on this side Syria, and behold, they be in Hazazanatarmar, which, sorry, which is in Gedi. Uh, think of this. You look at this map and it shows in Gedi. In Gedi is just on the other side uh, of some mountains from Jerusalem. These three, uh, these three uh, uh, countries have come together. They've come together. They've united. There are a multitude of them rising up together. And now they're encamped. They're just, uh, just over on the other side of a mountain from Jerusalem. They're there in En Gedi. And Jehoshaphat receives some word from some people uh, within Judah. And just imagine what the word would be. Uh, they're telling him that there's, um, that there's some people that are rising up against them that are coming to attack. And if you're Jehoshaphat and uh, you look and you see this multitude of people, uh, these uh, three nations that have come together, uh, they're encamped just to the south of Jerusalem. Uh, they've all united together. If I was the king and I looked and saw this, my first thought is going to be just like we look at the coronavirus. We look at some other situations in our life. We would say, this is a huge problem. Uh, this is a big mountain. How are we going to overcome this? What in the world? And there would be other people that would say, uh, uh, my goodness, how are you going to overcome this? How are you going to get through this? This is an impossible situation. There's three of them that have come together. Uh, there's no way that you can get a big enough army to beat them, to rise up against them. This is an impossible situation. And in this situation, Let's just say Jehoshaphat, and before we read forward, he says, well, I'm just going to focus on God. I'm just going to rely on God. I'm just going to trust in God. Many people would laugh at him. Many people would say that God was just his crutch, just like today. It might seem what's going on in your life. It's this huge mountain. There's a multitude. Y'all, there's um, uh, such a great enemy that is up against us. We're even being told right now with a, it's an invisible enemy that we're fighting against. Fighting against an invisible enemy sure does seem like an impossible fight. Guess what, y'all? The battle is not yours, but God's. The battle today, it's not ours. It's not yours. It's God's. That's exactly what Jehoshaphat is going to learn and the people of, uh, of Judah are about to learn. And if I could just encourage us with all the things that's happening with this coronavirus and other things that's can, it's beyond that in our lives today, the mountain's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And we're wondering, what are we going to do? There's this great multitude of problems. There's this great multitude of an enemy. There's an invisible enemy. How in the world are we going to see through this? Can I just encourage us today? Y'all, the battle's not yours. It's God's. I hope they don't encourage us. Notice because at this point, I would think, man, what in the world are they going to do? There's a great multitude of people that are rising up against them. I want us to skip to verse number 24. Turn to verse number 24. Here they are. In verse number two, it would seem impossible with the enemy that's up against them. Verse 24 says, And when Judah came down toward the watchtower in the wilderness... They looked into the multitude. They look into these three nations that have joined together. They look into this multitude and behold, they were dead bodies. Fallen to the earth and none escaped. 
all of a sudden what seemed impossible, y'all, uh, the people, they're killing each other. They're rising up against each other. What once appeared as a multitude of an enemy, now they're seeing that there's dead people that are laying around. They've fallen to the earth and none of them have escaped. It's not that they've retreated. Verse 25 says, and when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoil of them. Uh, um, so Jehoshaphat and his people weren't even there yet. Uh, but then when they show up to where the multitude had camped and where they were stationed, where they were positioned, now they show up there and they're going to take away the spoil, the things that they left behind, their goods and things that are there. It says they found among them in abundance, both riches with the dead bodies and precious jewels, which they stripped off for themselves more than they could carry away. They're gathering these things together, the spoil that's left there from these three nations. And it says they're gathering them together. It's more than they could carry. And it took them three days in gathering of the spoil. There was so much there. It took them three days to carry it back. In verse number 26. And on the fourth day, they assembled themselves in the valley of Baraka for their they bless the Lord. Baraka means blessing. And there they bless the Lord. Therefore, the name of the same place was called the Valley of Baraka unto this day. To this day, that valley is called the Valley of Blessing. What once appeared that there was a multitude and there's absolutely no way to defeat them. Now it's a Valley of Blessing. Then they returned every man of Judah and Jerusalem and Jehoshaphat in the forefront of them to go again to Jerusalem. They're going back to Jerusalem and they go with joy for the Lord had made them to rejoice over their enemies. They're going back triumphant. Uh, what once appeared as man, um, this is an impossible battle. And this is a battle that we, uh, we can't win this battle. But then something happened from verse number two to verse number 24, something miraculous happened. God stepped in. God did something absolutely unbelievable. So what happened between verse two and verse 24? Let's look because there's three things that Jehoshaphat and the people of Judah did that I believe that for each one of us with where we are today and not just in the situation with, the virus, with, this, with COVID-19, but in many things that are going on in our lives. And y'all, for the rest of our lives, when COVID-19 is gone, there's still going to be some mountains that come. There's still going to be some valleys that come. There's going to be some huge problems that arise down the road in, in our life, in our family, in our finances. There's, there's going to continue to be these things to arise. So what did they do that that we should be doing today? What did they do that we can learn from for the future? There's three things that they did. The number one, if you would notice what how they responded of what they did when it appeared that all hope was gone. The first thing, and y'all this isn't deep, but pray. They began to pray. If we go back to verse two, where it seemed impossible, where it seemed that all hope was gone, the enemy was encamped, was about to attack them. Verse number three says, and Jehoshaphat feared. The moment that he receives this news, he hears about the multitude that's there. His initial response is fear. I, I'm so thankful that in God's word, it doesn't um, give us people that appear just to be so super spiritual that we cannot relate. Um, for many of us, over the last six weeks, there's been fear that's come into our lives. Other times before the virus, um, think mountains come, problems come, valleys come. And one of the, our initial responses is fear. It says, and Jehoshaphat feared, but, and, so as the fear came into his life, he did not end there. He didn't just stay in that state of fear. Many people today have stayed in a state of fear with this COVID-19. That's not where God wants us. I understand that there may be some fear. I understand that fear could be generated and created and pushed upon us by other people in our life, by the media, by things that are happening that we're hearing. I understand that it could happen, but Christian, that's not where we should be today. I understand the reality of fear, the reality of fear. And Jehoshaphat does, but not only did he fear, it says, and set himself to seek the Lord. When the fear came into his life, where it seemed that all hope was gone, what he did and what we should do is we should begin to pray. Many of us have been praying, 
But can I tell you, it's not a time to stop right now. Y'all, we've got to continue in prayer. He goes on and it says, He set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judea. It's not just for him personally. He says, man, as a nation. Do you remember what happened when this coronavirus first arose? Our president called for a national day of prayer. Immediately said, hey, it's not just for one or two people to pray. He, he knew the benefit for a nation to pray. Um, and, and many people got together. We prayed about it. Some prayed then and some have kind of stopped. And y'all today, I just want to remind us, we're still in the midst of this. There's still some problems. There's a mountain. We may feel that we're in a valley, not with the virus, but other things in our life as well. Y'all, uh, what we must be doing and, and come together as a church, we, we should be coming together as an individual family, corporately as a church family. We need Christians to come together uh, and to pray, to call, to seek the Lord. And they proclaim this fast throughout all Judah. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. That word ask, seeing this situation where I believe that they're thinking, man, all hope is gone. How in the world are we going to win this battle? How in the world are we going to overcome these three enemies that have risen up against us? Uh, but so I don't think when Jehoshaphat calls them together and he leads them in prayer or as he's praying, as the people of Judah are praying, I don't think that it was just a, the same way they prayed that morning or the day before. I think that there was some urgency. I think that it was some desperation. I don't think that it was just a whisper and a calm tone of praying. I think that they were pouring their heart out. They were asking for help. They were saying, God, we can't do this. God, this is too big of a mountain. This is too big of a problem. This is too deep of a valley. God, we need you. We're seeking you. We're calling out to you for help. They're asking him for help. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. They're not whispering. They're in desperate call to God. They're joining together uh, in prayer of seeking God. You know, that's where we should be. That's where we should remain. And then notice verse 5. Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court. It's believed that this was in what was known as the woman, the women's court. The women's court was a place that all people could come together and pray. So they went to a place, the women's court, where it was um, men, women, children, everyone possible came together to pray. Notice verse 6 where the prayer actually starts. And as he starts in this prayer, there's three things that I want us to notice that, um, about this prayer, that he focused in this prayer. Notice with me, first of all, as he is saying this prayer and seeing the priority and the focus of his prayer, number one, he focused on the preeminence of God's power. He focused on the preeminence of God's power. Verse number six, it says that he said, this is as he's praying, as he began to pray, he says, what, what he, he's about to ask some rhetor, rhetorical questions. He knows the answer. But in his prayer, he's just saying this for his own comfort, his own confidence. But he's also saying this for other people to hear, to remind them of God, to remind them of who God is, to remind them of his um, thinking of his preeminence, to remind the people and himself of the superiority of God, of the majesty, how he is a supreme being, how he's majestic above all. He's in control of all things. He has power over all things. And he asked this question. He says, oh, Lord, uh, God of our fathers, art not thou God in heaven? Absolutely, the answer is yes. The next question he says, um, rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the heathen? The answer is absolutely yes. He knows the answer, but he's just reminding himself and he's, he is stating the preeminence, um, the majesty, uh, the, uh, the superiority of who God is. He says, and in thine hand, is there not power and might so that none is able to withstand thee? What he's doing, he's trying to draw the focus of him, his focus and the people of Judah, he's trying to draw their focus to God, to who God is. Oftentimes what will happen in our lives, at least I know this is what happens in mine. I believe that if you were here that you would agree with me. Um, typically when a problem arises in our lives and a mountain is before us, um, a, a valley is before us, what do we focus on? We focus on the mountain. We focus on the problem. At least I do. My initial response is, wow, that's a big problem. Man, that's a huge mountain. That's a deep valley. Same with Jeho Jehoshaphat. But what does he say? Let's get a 
proper focus. Let's don't focus on the mountain. Don't focus on the problem. Don't focus on the valley. Don't focus on COVID-19. Don't focus on your finances. Don't focus on, uh, on, on whatever it is that your focus is on today that, uh, that's bringing you to fear, that feels like all hope is gone. Don't focus on that problem. Focus on who God is. Is he not still the same God that we read about that Jehoshaphat's praying to? It's the same God. He's still in control. He still has preeminence. He's still supreme. He still uh, reigns in all of his majesty. Y'all don't focus on the mountain and the problem in your life. Let's focus on God and God's power. The second thing uh, within this prayer is that he focused on God's past performance. It says in verse number seven, art not thou our God? who didst drive out the inhabitants of this land before thy people Israel and gavest it to the seed of Abraham, thy friend forever? Aren't you the God who, he starts to remember some of the things that God has done for them before. He starts not only to um, remember this for himself, but y'all, this is a prayer he's called uh, the people of Judah together. They're there in that court. They're praying together. He's speaking out loud. He's called them all together and he says, hey y'all, might not have said y'all. He says, hey y'all, we need to remember what God has done in the past. We need to remember his past performances. Is he not the God that delivered us from before? Is he not the God that brought us here? And if he brought us here, is he not the God that's going to see us through? Is he not the God that's going to protect us? If he's brought us here, why is he going to neglect us now? Why is he going to forget us now? He says, that's not who he is. Don't forget his past performance. Y'all, for us today, it would do us well to think back of all the things that God has brought us through. Think back of all the problems that have been in your life that God solved. Think back of all the mountains that have been in your life that God overcame. Think of all the valleys that have been in your life that God brought you through. It does us well. We should not live in the past, but it does well for us to journal, to write, to reflect on the past performance of God for what he's brought us through. If, if today... If, 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 don't be discouraged. Don't focus on this battle. Don't focus on this. Think about what God's done before. I promise you he's going to see us through again. He was faithful in the past in his performance. He's going to be faithful today as well. Verse number uh, eight, it says, and they dwelt therein, have built uh, the sanctuary therein for thy, uh, for thy name, saying, uh, if... Um, when evil cometh upon us as a sword, judgment and pestilence or famine, we stand before this house and in thy presence, for thy name is in this house and cry unto thee in our affliction. Then thou wilt hear and help. They're saying, God, this is yours. You brought us here. This is yours. If it's yours, God, protect what is yours. If y'all would allow me, Brother Frank, often you say, this business is not mine, it's God's. And you count and you rely on God to provide. Right now today, if me and you were able to talk and to look at each other, I know that we'll be able to talk about God's past performance. And what we would say is, God, this is yours. You've given it to me. You brought me this far. See me through. Uh, Brother Gordon, Miss Judith, the exact same thing. You, uh, your business, it's God's. And you say that regularly. This is the Lord's. And God, you've done all this and you've gotten us to this point. We've expanded. You blessed and you blessed. And you would continue to say, God, if this is yours, you protect it, you bless. I think of Rick and Carol Klein, the exact same thing. Your business, it's God's. And you say, okay, man, we're not going to worry about it. God's brought us this far. God's blessed and blessed and blessed. And if God's done that, I, I, and I've had conversations with you, and it's, okay, Lord's going to see us through. He's done it before. And God, it's yours. Just protect it. I could go through the sanctuary of different people that several of you, we've had previous conversations of how God is blessed and God's provided. God's seen you through. God has done so much for your business and your family and your finances and for your health. Y'all, don't forget his past performance. If he's brought us to this point, he's not going to leave us now. He's not going to neglect us. He's not going to forsake us now. Just look to him. Call out to him. He's still here. The third thing to notice about this prayer uh, in verse number nine is to focus on God's present provision. Uh, he brought focus on God's present provision. And now behold, the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, whom thou wouldest not let Israel invade. Uh, when they 
came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and destroyed them not. Behold, I say how they reward us to come to cast us out of thy possession, which thou hast given us to inherit. God, today, we need you to provide. And he brought their focus on today's problem. Notice his progression in this prayer. He progressed with saying, okay, y'all, let's draw our attention to who God is. Don't focus on your mountain. Let's look to God. And as we look to God, let's do this as well. Before we don't look at this mountain, look at how faithful God has been. And if God's been so faithful, y'all, today, it, let's just ask him to provide for us today. That prayer is a great model for us to pray with what we are facing today. Verse number 12, it goes on and he says, Oh, our God, continuing to pray. And he says, Oh, our God, wilt thou not judge them? Uh, uh, for we have no might uh, against this great company that cometh against us. And again, he's saying, God, we can't, there's nothing we can do. Uh, God, uh, it, it, all hope is gone. He's saying, God, if you don't show up, if you don't do something, we're doomed. We're done. And some of you may be there right now. God, if you don't do something, our world, our nation, uh, our business, uh, our economy, uh, our food chain, God, if you don't show up, we're done. That's where they're at. And they're calling out and saying this to him. Verse 13, and all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. They've gathered together. They're in unity and they're saying, God, uh, we can't do this on our own. It seems that all hope is gone, but we have come to you. Yes, there could be fear in our lives because the enemy could overtake us, but God, we're praying, we're seeking you. Uh, we're seeking you for who you are, for what you've done, and we're counting on you to show up and do something today. So when the midst word appeared that all hope was gone, they prayed. But then number two, they listened to his promises. Verse number 14, it would do us well today. We may be praying, but are we really listening to what God is telling us? Verse 14, it says, Then, at the end of this prayer, then came Jehaziel. He's a prophet. He's the son of Zechariah, the son of Benai, the son of Jael, the son of Madaniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, came the spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. Jehaziel, which is a prophet of God, and here they are, they prayed, they joined together, they looked to the Lord, they say, Lord, we're seeking you. This is, we don't know what we're going to do. This is too big for us. Uh, and, and Lord, we need you to show up. We need you to help. And in the midst of that, God sends a prophet. God speaks to them. And notice what he says in verse number 15. He says, hearken ye, all Judah, not just Jehoshaphat, not just a few people, but all Judah, listen, uh, listen to this, all the inhabitants of Jerusalem uh, and thou King Jehoshaphat. So from uh, the least to the greatest, uh, listen, thus saith the Lord unto you. He did not just say it to Jehoshaphat. He didn't just say it to the men, to the adults. He didn't just say it to the children. He wants every single person to listen to this promise from God of what the Lord said unto them. God says, be not afraid. Remember what the very first thing that Jehoshaphat was when he was told that the enemy was risen up against them? The first thing that happened was fear. Isn't, isn't that awesome that now when this prophet comes to speak to encourage them with the mountain that's before them, the problem that's before them, to prove, to show that God hears, that God knows, that God's in control. The very first thing that the messenger addresses is the first thing that we're told that was a problem for Jehoshaphat. It's the same thing that truth for today. God still knows what's going on in your heart, in your mind, in your thoughts, in our emotions. He knows exactly. And his word speaks to us and encourages us. He would say the same thing to us today. In this message that he hears from God, there's three things that this messenger, that this prophet tells them that they needed to hear. The first thing was, have courage. Don't be afraid. That's what he told him. Have courage in this. Not just Jehoshaphat, but all of the people. Uh, don't be afraid. Be not afraid, nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude. Don't look at the mountain. He says, don't look at that multitude. For us, y'all, don't look at the problem. Don't look at what's happening. And then one of my favorite phrases in scripture, 
For the battle is not yours, but God's. What a reminder. I think that every one of us need to hear that today. I, I believe that if God would audibly speak to us through a, through a prophet, through an angel, through some type of messenger, it's preserved in his word. And I believe that today he would say, hey, y'all, don't be afraid. Don't be dismayed. Have courage. Why? This battle is not yours. My favorite word in the Bible, but. It's God's. Y'all, don't worry about this. Don't be afraid. Don't be dismayed. God's got this. It's his battle. And they needed to hear, just have courage. The second thing is they just needed to hear, just have faith. Have faith that God, and the faith is, this battle is God, not yours. So here it is today. Hey, Kenrick Barnett, um, have courage, have faith that God's going to take care of this. There's nothing that you can do. I could go around the sanctuary and I could say, hey, Reuben, uh, hey, Eric, and I could, hey, Javier, um, uh, Luna. I could go across all the way over and I could say, hey, Kimberly, hey, Rodney, hey, Miss Penny. Um, this battle is not ours. It's not yours. Um, have faith. He would speak and call us out by name and just say, have courage that God's going to do this. This is God's battle. Have confidence that this is God's battle. It goes on and it says, verse number 16, tomorrow, uh, and, and just continuing with the message from God, don't be afraid, don't be dismayed, uh, don't be worried about this mountain, this great multitude. This battle's not yours, it's God's. Just have faith, have courage in this. It goes on, tomorrow, go ye down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Ziz, and ye shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jer Jeriel. He tells them exactly. Isn't it, isn't it awesome to know that this messenger of God clearly identifies the multitude? Not only who the multitude is, but exactly where they're at. He knows everything about this problem, this mountain, this valley. He knows everything about whatever in your life that's bringing fear. God's in control. He knows everything about the coronavirus. He knows everything about your finances, about, uh, uh, about your family, about your business. God knows absolutely everything. He could tell us to the T exactly about it. Y'all, because the battle's his. Don't you think that if he's going to battle for us, that he knows the enemy? Don't you think that if he's going to battle for us, he knows exactly what we're fearful, what we're worried about? Y'all, don't be afraid. Don't be dismayed. Have courage. Have faith. This battle is God's, and he knows exactly what's out there against us. And it says in verse number 17, um, ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Wait a minute. I would be like, what do you mean? Have you lost your mind? What do you mean we don't need to fight in this battle? Have you not seen who's out there? Don't you see the multitude of people? Don't you see this? Don't you see this mountain? What do you mean that I, there's nothing that I need to do? Don't you see the problem? What are you talking about that there's nothing that I am going to need to do in this battle? Um, it goes on and it says, and this is the, the, the third thing is, see it through. Set yourselves, stand ye still, still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you. That's a whole nother sermon with three S's there, but he says, just set yourselves, be calm, stand still. It means you don't need to fight and see the salvation of the Lord with you. See it through. Don't, don't lack faith and run. Don't lack courage and throw in the towel and quit. See it through. Y'all, right now, it's not a time to let fear overcome you. It's not a time to let discouragement distract you. It's not a time to throw in the towel. We have prayed to God. We have asked God to see us through. We've asked God to provide, to protect. We're continuing to do this. Y'all, we need to stand still. This battle is God's and we need to see it through. We need to allow God to perform, to do what he's going to do. We need to remain faithful, trusting in him. And, he, and, and this is what the messenger of God is instructing them to do. It goes on, it says, O Judah and Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them for the Lord will be with you. Just that last little bit of encouragement. When you march down there, uh, you're not going to have to lift your hand. You're not going to have to fight. This battle is God's. Just have courage, have faith, just see it through, just do what I'm telling you and God's going to give you victory. God's going to protect you. He's going to see you through. God's going to be with you. And then the third thing, not only did they pray, not only did they listen to the promises of God, 
but they, they, they began to praise him. They started to praise him. Verse number 18, and when Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord, they're starting to praise God. They've received the, uh, the word from the messenger of the Lord. They fall before the Lord and they start to worship God. The battle hasn't even started, but they start praising him. They start worshiping him. Verse 19, and the Levites and the children of the Kohathites and the children of the Korhites, they stood up to praise the Lord, God of Israel, with a loud voice on high. What happens? It's the choir. It's the singers. It's the musicians that are coming together and they're leading in worship. They're singing with a loud voice on high. They rose early in the morning. They went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and he said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe ye in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe as prophets, so shall ye prosper. Jehoshaphat is now, man, he's going out in faith. He's going out in courage. He's going to see it through and he's encouraging the other ones around. It's the same thing for us, y'all. What we need to be doing is encouraging each other, reminding each other, we pray to God. We're seeking God. We're asking for God to see us through, to deliver us. Let's encourage each other to have faith. Let's encourage each other to be courageous. Let's encourage each other to see it, to see through what God is going to do. We should be encouraging each other with this. We should be worshiping, praising God for what he's going to do. They raise up in the morning. They're going to do this, verse 21. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord that they should praise the beauty of, his, uh, of holiness. He doesn't appoint soldiers. He doesn't appoint um, an infantry or a military. He doesn't go and get guns and cannons. He does not go and put them together to go fight this. I have never seen someone go to battle where basically they put a group of singers, a choir together to worship, to pray. That's how they're going to battle is just praising God. He put them together and it says they should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and to say the song that they sang, praise the Lord. For his mercy endureth forever. They're going to battle, singing a song, praise the Lord. For his mercy endureth forever. And when they began to sing and to praise, it's almost as if the cue for the battle to begin, when they began to sing, when they started to praise God, the Lord set ambushes against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. When they began to praise God, the Lord set ambushes against the three tribes that have risen up against them, the multitude that is there. Here comes Judah with Jehoshaphat. They're just singing praise to God. They're marching towards the multitude of people. And now God puts, and the Lord puts um, ambushment. Uh, they turn against each other for the children of Ammon in verse 23, the children of Ammon and Moab, they stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir utterly to slay and to destroy them. And when they had made an end uh, of the uh, inhabitants of Seir, every one helped to destroy another. Each one of them, as uh, uh, the people of Judah are marching to battle, they're coming, they're singing to God. Uh, the enemy starts to turn against each other. Each one of them are killing each other. And here is Judah. And they're just singing. They're just giving praise to God. How can they do it? Well, the battle's not theirs. It's God's. And guess what the next verse is? Verse 24, where God gave them victory, where they experience great blessing in the valley of Baraka. How did they get from where it seemed absolutely impossible to the valley of blessing from God and a great victory? They prayed. They listened to his promise and they praised God. When we praise God before we go to battle, as they did, it, number one, it shows that our confidence is in him. Y'all, a lot of times, I, I can do well praising God after victory. 
that it's hard for me to praise him before. Because often in the initial, I'm looking at the mountain, I'm looking at the problem, I'm looking at the valley. You know, what should happen? The battle's not mine. It's not yours. It's God's. And when we can start praising him for what he's going to do, trusting him, having confidence in him, y'all, it just shows he's got this. When we can praise him, my confidence is in him. It's not in me. It's not in anybody else. The second thing that it does, it alleviates the fear that is inside of me. We all have fear. If we can praise God in the midst of a, with a mountain in front of us, a valley, a big problem, if we can praise God, the fear that's inside of it, it's, it's going to be squashed, hindered, it's going to be done away with because what, we're not focused on the fear. We're not allowing fear to overcome us and overtake us. That's not where our thoughts are. It's not where our actions are. What are we doing? Man, we're praising God. Therefore, the fear is out of our life. And then the last thing that it will do is it will endear our relationship with the Lord. What that means is that it will strengthen it. It will prove it. It will liken it. That, that shows others. Um, uh, it, it reminds us when we can praise God. Um, man, we're reminded of our relationship with God. It deepens our relationship with the Lord. But as well, it's a testimony to other people that when we are in the midst of this battle with a huge problem in a mountain and a valley and we start praising God saying, this isn't my battle, this is God's. I'm not going to be afraid because God's going to see us through. He's going to overcome this. He's going to protect. He's going to provide. I, I know who God is. I know what he's done before. When we start doing that, what an absolutely incredible impact on other people's lives. And that's where we need to be today. That's how we need to be um, an encouragement to others. So there's a formula, a simple formula. Prayer plus promise plus praise equals blessing. Today, there's a formula for you individually, for your family, for our church, for our nation. Prayer, pray y'all, promises, listen to God's promises. Trust in God's promises. Praise. Sing praise to him. Testify. Trust him. Have courage. Have faith. Let other people know that you're trusting him. Start singing, praise ye the Lord, because he's, man, his mercy endureth forever. He's going to see us through. He's going to provide. He's going to protect. Sing praise. And y'all, if we do those three things, I promise God promises blessing. There's no mountain that's, excuse me, there's no problem that's so big that God can't take care of it. There's no mountain so huge that God can't scale it. There's no valley too deep that God can't create a bridge over it. No matter what's in your life, no matter what problem, mountain or valley, don't lose sight of who God is. And be reminded, that problem, that mountain, that valley, it's not your battle. It's God's. Would you bow your heads with me this morning? And I just want you, y'all, today, I, great impression upon the Lord just to be, to use his word, to teach, to preach his word, to be an encouragement to you, to remind us in the midst of this problem, mountain, valley, the battle is not ours, but God's. You may be fearful. You know what? That's okay. Seek God. Turn to him. And when you pray, notice the characteristics of Jehoshaphat's prayer. You know, let's be reminded of who he is. Let's be reminded of what he's done before. And let's trust him to, to provide in our current situation. And y'all, you know, God has a message in his word. God has promises for us. And his promises for us today are just like what he told them. Just have courage, have faith. Allow God's word, see it through. God, he promises in his word to never leave us nor forsake us. God has not left us and he will not forsake us. Y'all, with this mountain, this problem, this valley, trust in his promises, see his promises through. And what we should be doing today and in the days to come, no matter what the next mountain is, no matter what the next valley, no matter what the next problem is, y'all just keep praising God. Praise him because his mercy endureth forever. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And we should be marching and telling people we should be the light. We should be the encouragement. We should be encouraging other people to have faith and to have courage and to see God through in this. Y'all, 
this battle is not mine, it's God's. I can have great peace today. I can have comfort. I can go through this world with courage and faith because I want to see what God's going to do. I'm trusting in his word and his promises, and I am praising him every day for what he's doing. Would you join me in this battle? I'm not King Jehoshaphat, but I would love to gather our church together, you and your homes to gather together and say, God, this battle's not ours. This, it, it, Lord, this battle is yours. Thank you for reminding us of that today. Help us, Lord, to refocus our attention on who you are, what you've done, and to trust in you for today. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you how your word can encourage us. And Lord, today, thank you for encouraging us through your word. Lord, I pray that each one of us would continue in prayer. Maybe we have it, um, Lord, maybe we've been living in fear and we truly have not began to pray with a mountain, with a problem or a valley that's come into our life. Lord, help each one of us to truly go to you, to seek your face. Um, Lord, it, it may feel that it's in desperation because uh, it, it appears that all hope is gone in our life or in a marriage or in a relationship with our finances, with something physically. Lord, we may feel that all hope is gone today. But through prayer and through your word, you would remind us of your promises. You would encourage us and say, just have faith. Just have courage. See my promises through. Just trust in me. Just move forward. God's by our side. And Lord, as we march forward today, as we continue to march forward, Lord, we're not going to quit. We're not going to throw in the towel. We're not going to let this evil um, uh, enemy uh, defeat us. Lord, we're trusting in you to see us through, and we're going to praise you. Maybe we haven't in the past, but Lord, starting right now, Lord, we're, we're, we're going to start singing praise to you. Uh, we're going to praise you because your mercy endureth forever. Hallelujah. Lord, today that I pray and I trust that each of us, as this message concludes, Lord, that our attention would be on you, our focus on you, Lord, that we would not live in fear as this world, but that we would live in hope, trusting in you. Lord, that we would believe your word, that we would hold on to your promises. And Lord, help us to, to carry on singing praise to you. Lord, we thank you for the hope that you give us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in today. We love you. Again, um, Lord willing, tomorrow or Tuesday, we'll give uh, a video announcement um, for what the future will look like for services for church. But again, thank you all for tuning in. We love you. We'll miss you. And we look forward to worshiping with you again very soon. Have a great day. And if there's anything that we can do as staff, please contact us uh, and uh, we'll do anything that we can to help you. God bless you. Thank you for watching.